Alright, now, here is something that's kind of goofy. We're going to let g of x be equal to the integral from 0 to x squared There's an issue that came up that comes up here. We had the integral from zero to x squared of t cubed plus the square root of t cubed plus three dt. Now, if I want to find g prime of x, this is equal to a of x. Actually, bless you. It's actually equal to a of x squared. Because this upper limit is what gets put into my area function. And so this is my area function. So when you're dealing with an upper limit, we're going to be dealing with an area function. We just called it g of x for the regular for this situation right here and we're dealing with the area function. Now, this is going to be equal to g prime of x is going to be equal to a prime of x squared. Because that's what the area function actually is. Because the upper limit is x squared, that has to go into here. Now, is that x or is that something, is that a function that is more than x? Chain rule. So, what's the derivative? We'll write it like this to start with. But the cool thing is, it really just comes down to this. g prime of x is going to be equal to, take this guy, and plug in my x squared. So I'm going to get x squared to the third power plus 3. I'm going to take this whole thing and multiply it by the chain rule. Well, what's the derivative of x squared? 2x. So this is going to be equal to 2x times the square root of x to the 6 plus 3. This pops up a few times on the AP exam, so you got to know. You got <laughs> you got to know how to do this. You might see it like this. What does that mean? Yeah, this is a verb. Just to let you know, it's a verb. It's an it's an action word. It tells you you got to do something. So we're going to take a derivative. G of x equals an integral of something. If we take the derivative, we're taking the derivative of an integral. And they cancel each other out. Because it's like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. They just cancel each other out. But we have to take into account this upper limit, that x squared. Since everything, basically what's happening is everything is being termed of, in, instead of, being in terms of t, it's going to be in terms of the x squared now. So once we take the derivative of an integral, those two things cancel out. We're left with whatever is being in integrated. But we have to take this value, whatever is the upper, whatever is that limit with x, and plug it in there for t. We have to replace t with whatever that upper limit is. So we get stuck with that. So it's basically saying, all right, derivative and integral, they cancel each other out. But if I got this crazy upper limit up here, I have to replace the t with that. All right. 
Now, something as weird and as complicated as this, actually, once you get used to it, becomes a very, very easy process. And you're saying to yourself, this guy's a lunatic. There's nothing easy about what we're doing right now. But I'm taking a derivative of an integral. What happens to a derivative and an integral when they come together? It's like matter and antimatter. They just cancel each other out. But there's an x squared up top. So what's going to happen to all the t's in my problem? They're going to become x squared. So the t becomes x squared, then the t plus 1 becomes x squared plus 1. Now, if this was a, and I'll, I'll just tell you this, if you want, if you don't want to have to remember anything, just remember one thing. Well, one thing with two parts. One, if you're taking the derivative of the integral, you're just going to replace all the t's with the upper limit, the x squared. So we get x squared over x squared plus 1, and then multiply by the chain, by the derivative of this upper limit. If it was an x, what would be the derivative? 1. Would you multiply by anything? No. But it's kind of like the chain rule is there for every single problem. If it's just a plain old x, the chain rule is 1. Because the derivative of x is 1, we don't have to worry about it. But now, what's the derivative of x squared? 2x. Now, we can put this in the top, 2x cubed over x squared plus 1. And that's our answer to this problem. Now, if you just remember that the, the derivative and the integral blow each other up, they're gone, x squared, whatever this is, just gets, you just do a simple replacement, then multiply by the chain rule at the top. All this becomes really, really easy to do and something you can do in a blink of an eye because all it is is substitution.